Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining our Oracle Dev Lab today, covering an introduction to cloud native. Today, we have Jimmy Tang and YK Eng, who will be speaking to you. Without further ado, I hand over to the team. Thanks, Jane. Yep, uh, welcome, everyone. Um, good afternoon, good morning. I think that we have a guest coming around the world. So uh, my name is Jimmy Tan. I'm Senior Cloud Specialist. Uh, my role is uh, specialized in the infra and security. Uh, but at the same time, I also do some analytics and uh, as, well, as well as the cloud native uh, uh, DevOps tools as well. Yeah. Uh, you can maybe you can do a quick intro about yourself. Yeah. Hi, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is YK and I'm also part of the Oracle Cloud uh, Engineering. So I'm specialized in um, um, uh, native, Oracle Cloud native. Yeah. So I'm calling okay. from Malaysia as well. That's all. Okay, thanks. Right, so uh, so I'm going to start now. Uh, so the agenda for today is that we're going to cover is uh, we roughly take about 120 minutes, two hours, but uh, we, we try to reduce that time. Uh, so the this is the agenda. Uh, we're going to show how we're going to set up the trial account, and I think most of you have have get the links. And then this is the labs that we're going to uh, present later. So first thing is that um yeah you need to have the Satra account. Uh, I think uh, YK has uh, put the link here. If if any of you have not uh, signed up the trial account yet, you can click on the link and then proceed from there. And the link should be looks like this. Uh, let me see if I can show you the live uh the live site. Yeah. So this will be the live uh trial account websites that uh once you come in here. For those that you have signed up, you can click on this straight away and log in your trial. So just put your account name and then move on. So for those that you have not yet signed up, you can click on this start for free, click on this button, and then you just fill up your uh, information and then uh, make sure that the email that you use to register that you for this uh, workshop, you use back the same emails because we have done the white listing so that you can con you can proceed to get the uh, the account without uh, needed to enter the credit card details. Okay. Right. So let me come back here. Um, yeah. So uh, before we start the lab, uh, let me just quickly uh, have some quick overview about Cloud Native. Uh, everyone should know that uh, Cloud Native this day is uh, quite a popular term that we use uh, because uh, most of the uh, application that we run in the cloud is, is going to be uh, Cloud native, so that is a uh, it run on open source. Uh, the purpose is to get a, a gel develop deployment, so it, everything can be run very fast and uh, easy, and then you can scale it, scale, scale the resources more efficiently. At the same time, that uh, because you are using the uh, open source, so we reduce the lock in, so that you, you using the same tools that you can go, it can be deployed in other cloud as well, right? Uh, same thing that uh, there are a number of uh, languages that we also supported. Uh, I will show that in the next slide. Uh, for, for this uh, workshop that we're going to uh, have a demo quickly later is uh, to show some containers running in the Kubernetes. So all, all, the, all the containers running is called microservices. And then later on, uh, I will show the uh, functions that is also part of the serverless apps. Uh, so the, the tools that you can see from the left hand side here is uh, what we're going to use uh, show today is the Docker's Kubernetes and Function. So Function is uh, one of the serverless uh, applications that Oracle provide. And uh, there is a Terraform script that we also provided. That is this is to for you to easily uh, spin up the cloud resources. So you don't need to use the uh, console uh, wizard to provision it. So this is a very fast manner that you can uh, provision all the uh, cloud resources using a Terraform script. Okay. Uh, so from this diagram, you can see that uh, not only that Oracle provide the, the common infrastructure like any, any other clouds, uh, we provide this uh, DevOps tool. So there are a number of uh, tools that we provided here. You can see here Ansible, Chef, and then we also have the Cloud Shell. So Cloud Shell is a built-in browser shell that you can just click and launch the shell from the browser. So you don't have to install any uh, tools on your PC and so on. 
the language that I mentioned earlier is that you can use uh, Python, the, the uh, famous one. Uh, some other is uh, Java or Node.js, things like that. Uh, so for cloud native, this is what we're going to talk about later. And on top of that, that uh, we also provide a uh, data management. Of course, Oracle run uh, the best uh, Oracle da database so that we have uh, Oracle database, you can have SQL or non-SQL. And some of the DevOps tool that we provide for the operations that you can use the uh, automations that we can uh, do uh, log monitoring, things like that. So this is part of the observability. Yeah, so uh, just to explain a little bit about the component, each of them. Uh, so for Kubernetes, uh, for those that is familiar, this is the fully managed uh, certified Kubernetes service. So we, we have this uh, service deployed in uh, all our Oracle Cloud regions around the world. We have about 30 regions now today. Uh, this will contain all the uh, containers for you to manage. And then uh, for, the con for the Docker image, we have our Oracle registry that store all the image so that you can ensure that uh, the privacy is there. So we keep it in confiden confidential, so within your own uh, tenancy. And the, comp the next component is the functions. So function is like a, a, a more a more a small applications that you do not require any infrastructure because that you uh you only it only will run as and when there's an event trigger to to execute the functions. So you only use it when there is a certain events that trigger this. Right. So I will show more during the lab. Yeah. So for streaming, we support the uh, Kafka compatible data flow, and we also have the API uh, management. So that you can we can use the API for building the APIs and so on. All right. Okay. So this is the links um, for the workshops. So everyone can just uh, uh, click on the link. Uh, you can check on the Q and A. We have, we have the link put in there as well. So you can click on that and then you can uh, join with us uh, during the hands-on lab. So you can uh, start building uh, all all the components that we're going to show later. Okay. Right. So uh, without further ado, I will pass the uh, to KY to continue for the lab. So I will stop sharing here. Uh, hi, uh, yeah, YK, you can show your screen. Okay. Yeah. Hi, hi everyone. Um, thanks again, uh, Jimmy. Uh, this is YK again. So let me share out my screen. Just give me a moment. Okay, uh, you guys can see my screen, right, uh, Jimmy? Yep, can. Okay, cool, cool. So um, basically for my session here, I'm going to um, talk about the uh, Oracle Container Engine for Kubernetes. So as a prerequisite for this exercise, uh, is basically to have some uh, basic conceptual understanding of the containerized applications using uh, Docker's and also the orchestrations with the uh, Kubernetes. So basically, um, um, Dockers is actually a container platform where you can actually package your applications into a container. So meaning the container which consists of your application code uh, and some other dependencies, such as the runtime, the libraries, and as well as the configurations. So it is fine that you can actually uh, deploy these um, uh, containers into any operating system as long as there's a there's a container engine like for example a Docker engine installed into the operating system. That's why you can do it for let's say for for a couple of containers that you can uh, manually deploy it. But what happens if you have let's say a uh, hundred to two hundred containers that you need to deploy into a clusters of servers? So that is why you need a, a, a Kubernetes um, um, platform as a orchestrations, okay? So, um, so basically it allows you to, to, to manage a large scale of container applications. So things like, for example, it allows you to, uh, to, to, to schedule a deployment or to scale the, the clusters. So today, um, for, for this section, I'm going to talk about the uh, Oracle Container Engine for Kubernetes. 
So basically, this is actually a, a, a fully managed services or, or you can call it as a container as a services. So as you know, for Kubernetes, um, there's two main components. One is the uh, Kubernetes master nodes and the other one is uh, Kubernetes uh, app, uh, worker nodes. That's where you actually run your applications. That's your, 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 your uh, data play and all those things. So, so for this um, um, managed services um, platform, so Oracle will actually take care of the, uh, uh, the cluster as well as the uh, manage, manage uh, uh, so the master nodes. So you are only responsible for the uh, uh, worker nodes. So, so for this service, you can actually quickly uh, spin up this uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, clusters just within uh, a couple of minutes. I'm going to show you uh, during the lab sessions. So for the lab sessions, uh, what I'm going to cover is, um, so basically there are three labs related to this uh, OKE. So the first lab is basically to set up the uh, cloud environment. So uh, what's in this is uh, you need to create a compartment. So I'll explain what is compartment later when I go into the, dive into the, uh, 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 Oracle console. So you need to create a compartment, then after that, you need to provision the Kubernetes clusters in this compartment. So after we are done with that, on lab two, we are going to actually um, download a microservices applications. It's actually an e-commerce uh, e uh, platform, which consists of polygon of microservices. So we are going to deploy this uh, into the Kubernetes uh, clusters as well in lab two. And then uh, followed by the third lab, which is um, mainly on the monitoring and uh, on the deployment clusters, okay? So without uh, further ado, um, let's, let me uh, go into the uh, lab content. I will briefly guide you through the lab content. Um, just give me a second, yeah? So you got the link as well in the Q&A sessions. So it's the same link. So. So when we you, you open up the link in the browser, this is what you will get. So basically this is the con lab content. It has all the detailed steps on each of these lab sessions, whether it's, uh, it has all the descriptions as well as the screenshot. So the first step is, uh, you can see that it's uh, getting started. Getting started is basically, uh, the first step is actually the trial account, which uh, Jimmy already mentioned earlier on. And then after that, uh, the second step is to sign on to the cloud console. So I will I will briefly explain about uh, on these three labs as uh, before I jump into the cloud console to explain about the the, the step. Okay, so basically for OKE as I mentioned, that's involve uh, lab one to lab three. So basically, um, okay. So this is the first lab. So as I mentioned, you need to actually log into the Oracle Cloud Console. So once you log in, then you see this uh, the console page. So it will actually guide you through uh, on the, the building up some of the uh, environment components, like for example the compartments. Okay, it's okay. I will I will actually show you step by step uh, when I switch on to the uh, switch to the uh, Cloud Console. Okay, so this is a component that you need to create. And then after that, um, then followed by the provisioning of the Kubernetes clusters. So it's a very, it's a quite a, a, just a simple steps to do it. Okay. So basically, this is the first step. Okay. So let me let me let me switch to switch to the um, um, cloud console, so that you can um, uh, you can either actually refer back to this lab content or you can actually follow um, what I'm doing on the screen. Okay, so to access the cloud console, you can also go back to the getting started here, right? You go to step two, and then in step two, right, you can actually see there's a link, uh, cloud.oracle.com. So it's, you can click on it. So um, basically, okay, let me uh, do a, a, a screen split.
So basically, I'm going to start with the lab one here. You can see on the left side of the, uh, the left browser, I click on the lab one. So I'm going to start with the login, the first steps. So in order, uh, okay, let's go back to this uh, cloud, okay? okay? So basically the first step, so when you registered for your account, uh, basically you need to enter the tenancy as well as your email address. So the first step is to enter, when you want to log in, you need to enter your tenancy. So this is my tenancy name. And then after that, I click on next. And then just click continue on the single sign-on using the Oracle Identity Cloud Services. Okay, just continue, click on it. And then you need to key in your email address, your login email address. No password as well. So once you're logged in, this is actually the Oracle Cloud Console. So I just uh, want to give you a bit of uh, uh, descriptions on this. So basically on the right-hand side, you can see this is your home region. Um, this, mine is uh, Ashburn. So of course you can actually connect to some other uh, region as well in, in Oracle Cloud, okay? So this is a home region. So basically, um, there are some there are some quick actions that you can. Let's say you want to provision an uh, instance, you can actually click on this to quickly just bring up a, a compute instances and any of the Oracle Cloud resources that you need. Okay. So this is the uh, quick action part. Okay. Uh, the most important part is uh, the navigations. Okay. To to navigate to the resources, so you click on the burger icon here on the left hand corner. So these are the uh, these are uh, the resources. For example, the storage, the compute, and the databases. And uh, for today's sessions, it will be more on the de developer service, which is consists of those uh, Oracle Cloud Native like Kubernetes and as well as your function applications. Okay. So the, the screen might looks a bit uh, different compared to the lab content uh, that I shown. But basically, it's just the, the navigations because uh, recently they just do a, a upgrade and to simplify the navigations, okay? So basically, for, for the first part of this uh, first lab session is to uh, create a compartment. So to create compartment, basically what you do, you go to the uh, identity and security menu, you click on it. So once you click on it, then you, there's a compartment here under identity. So you click on the compartment. So in the lab sessions, what you do, you need to first of all, create a compartment called app dev. Okay. So this is step one, login successful. Then after that, uh, basic. So this is a compartment that we are going to create app dev. Okay. So to do that, um, first of all, you need to click on create compartment here. So basically you need to put a name for the compartment. App dev. I, I, I just put it as one because I've done a couple of times. Okay, um, a description, of course, um, you can just put any descriptions, uh, Kubernetes, uh, Training something. Okay, make sure that you select the parent compartment under roots. Okay. Okay, once you are done with that, you can just click on create compartment. So so a compartment will be created. So basically a compartment, what it does is actually it allows you to um, isolate your resources in the cloud. So for example, if let's say you want to isolate based on different uh, project in a company, for example, you have finance, you have marketing department, so you want to segregate all these resources, so you can compartmentalize all these resources in the compartment. 
So you create a compartment and then you can, whenever you want to create or provision any resources, make sure that you choose the compartment that you want to uh, dedicate to, create to. Okay. So this is, this is, this is basically uh, the idea of uh, compartment in Oracle Cloud. Okay. So, okay, you can see that uh, AppDev is already uh, created here. So the second step for lab one is basically to uh, to create the uh, um, okay the, the it actually it asks you to actually access the cloud shell. So cloud shell, this is the cloud shell. Okay, uh, Jimmy has mentioned earlier on what is cloud shell. So you can go to the top right corner. This is the cloud shell. You click on it. So basically, Cloud Shell is actually a uh, small computing, computing units um, sitting in the tenancies. So um, it comes, it basically, it's a, it's a VM that attached to these tenancies. So it comes with a pre-installed kind of uh, tools, for example, the OCI CLI, command line uh, interface tools for you to actually uh, communicate with a lot of resources in Oracle. And apart from that, of, of course, it comes with other tools like, um, like um, uh, any um, uh, pro programming language SDK, like Java, Python, and, and, and Node.js. So it's already pre-installed in this uh, instance as well. So the, the, the best thing is uh, this is actually provided uh, free. Uh, as long as you have the login to the cloud console, you can actually access this um, uh, cloud shell for free. Okay, and of course, uh, it, it says you don't have to do any uh, authentication. It's already pre-authenticated because when you log into this, since it, it is only allowed to uh, use in the cloud console, console, because you need to obviously need to log into the cloud console to access this, right? Okay. So okay, this is done. Uh, second step is to provision the um, Kubernetes clusters in this uh, compartment. So it's very straightforward. Uh, again, uh, we can, as I mentioned, you can just spin it up within a few minutes. So to do that, go back to the navigation menu and then click on the developer service. Okay. So um, you can see there's the Kubernetes uh, clusters. As I mentioned, this is a managed services. So it says click on it, uh, Kubernetes clusters. Okay, um, you can either select your compartment now or you can select it later when you create a cluster. For me, I can I choose to select it now. So remember that the compartment that I created earlier, so I just select this uh, compartment, app dev, okay? So you can click on create cluster. Okay, there's two options for you to create a clusters. For this lab, we are going to just do a quick create of the uh, Kubernetes uh, clusters. So what, what does this do is actually, it actually uh, provisions the Kubernetes cluster as well as the uh, worker nodes. Worker nodes, as I mentioned, is the place where you actually, um, uh, your application run, okay? Apart from that, of course, um, there are other resources as well. So for example, you, you actually create a, a, a network, the VCN network, and also, also um, spin up the uh, internet gateway because um, things like that. So there are other resources that is available in Oracle Cloud, you can, they, they, they will utilize when you create the Kubernetes clusters, okay? So you can, you can click on launch workflow. So it's, it's something like a visit for you to create the clusters. It's a very simple one. So you can just put a name or you can just leave it as it is, uh, cluster one. And then, um, like I mentioned earlier on, if you haven't selected the compartment, you can um, select or otherwise you can change it here, okay? App dev, dev, uh, app dev compartment. So this is the current version as supported by Oracle. Of course, you can change it, but we'll just uh, stick with this uh, current version. And it allows you to actually um, open up the API endpoint as well, whether it's a public or private uh, uh, workers, whether it's private for workers as well, you can actually select private or public. So I think most of it will, will actually, for internal usage, you will end up using the private uh, endpoint. So for this exercise, we will just stick to this, the default. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. 
Okay, the, the, the thing is about um, Kubernetes, when you need to uh, provisions, you need to provisions the worker nodes. So in Oracle, we allow you to actually um, select multiple kind of uh, shape. So for example, in this shape, you can see that's the number of shape that you can actually select on. So for this, if you want to have a dedicated um, server's high performance, you can select the uh, VMware or you can select uh, uh, virtual machines. So for this, we'll select uh, uh, optimize uh, three, flex. So you can see that uh, for flex, right, you can actually select um, how many CPU for each worker nodes that is required. So it's quite flexible. And the, the, the memories is uh, actually based on the number of CPU. For example, one, one CPU is, uh, you will get about 24, uh, 14, sorry, 14 uh, GB of memory. So you can actually play around with this. Okay, for this, we will stick with one since it's a trial count. So for the nodes, so these are actually the, the worker nodes for the clusters. So the, the, the system is smart enough to put all these nodes into three different, uh, uh, we call it AD, avail availability uh, domain. So to cater for any uh, failover. over. So because for each region, right, um, in Oracle, there will be uh, uh, a couple of data center sitting in that region to cater for any uh, failover or high availability uh, concern. Okay, so we'll just stick with that. So once you're done with that, um, you just click on next. And then um, this is mainly for your confirmations. So this is the network components that will be created. And this is the node pool, it consists of uh, three nodes, three worker nodes. So we just click on create cluster to create the, to provisions the Kubernetes clusters. Just click on it. So you can see that it is uh, creating. So this will actually take um, a couple of, couple of minutes, uh, let's say about, I think about five to six minutes to, to complete the, the, to activate to fully activate these uh, clusters, okay? At the meantime, you can actually close it. So it's still creating. So as I mentioned, it will take about um, five to um, 10 minutes, uh, five minutes, I think. So let me let me see if there's any, any question, Q&A questions that I can help out on this. So um okay, there's a question on whether uh, what is the is it the do we need to pay for the uh, Kubernetes? Okay, let, let me let me pull you out uh, pull out a slide. Okay, hold on now. Yeah. Let me pull out a slide. It's okay. So as for um, Oracle Container Engine for Kubernetes, it is actually a managed services. So basically, um, as you can see on, on the left-hand side, the, the gray scale, gray the, uh, boxes here, these are actually the, uh, some of the um, master, master, master nodes. These are actually, for example, the, the CDs and things like that. So these are high availabilities. Um, so these are actually managed, managed by Oracle. And then of course you have your uh, registry that you can actually store your your Docker images and all those things. So so these these two components um, when you provisions a uh, Kubernetes are actually uh, the services is actually free. So as I mentioned before, um, yeah, users is well, um, a user. What I mean is customers for trial account. Of course you have some credit to 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 actually uh, utilize all these resources. For customers, if they, they want to continue with the Kubernetes clusters, they only actually pay for the underlying resources such as the uh, compute instances, the, the some of the uh, storages and things like that. So that's, that's the good thing about the um, Oracle uh, uh, container engines. Okay. So while waiting, while waiting, um, let me let me show you some of the what are the what are the okay, advantages, uh, discuss, talk about the advantages of uh, OKE. Obviously, um, for any cloud environment, including Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, you can actually build your Kubernetes clusters from, from scratch. 
meaning that you can actually build your uh, Kubernetes uh, master nodes and your worker nodes all, all from scratch. Of course, you need to configure this, the networks and of course some security concerns and you need to do some installation about uh, 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 Kubernetes and things like that. So this is actually a very complex, complex uh, task. So that's why when, when you use uh, this OKE as a managed services, you can quickly just spin up the clusters just within minutes. So you don't have to worry about managing your, your, uh, your, uh, your, your clusters, uh, your network, how do you scale your storage and, and things like that. These are, these are all taken care, taken care in uh, these managed services. So, so you only focus on the applications that you need to deploy into your worker uh, cluster nodes. Okay, so this is one of the advantage of using uh, the managed services in OKE. So of course, of course, um, some other things like for example, if you want to do an upgrade, upgrade upgrading the uh, Kubernetes cluster is a is a huge task because you know you need you need to plan out and 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 do the kind of uh, upgrade deployment. So, but for for managed services, these are all uh, taken care by uh, uh, the services itself. Okay. So of course, if if you want to spin it up anytime that you need to, then you can just as and then you can just spin it up. Okay. Okay. Let me let me go back to the console. See whether it's already uh, ready. Okay, it's still um, creating. Um, of course, it is. Um, I think it will be coming up soon. Okay, let let me discuss a little bit about the next step once you bring up the uh, uh, the clusters. Okay, the next step is to basically uh, for you to access the cluster using the shell cloud. This is a cloud shell, sorry, the cloud shell. So you can actually, because it's already installed with the kubectl, um, basically it's, it's a client for you to communicate with your Kubernetes clusters. So the, the client is already installed in this uh, um, shell itself. Okay. So once this is done, then okay, um, then we will we will proceed. We will proceed with the next lab sessions. Okay. So for the next next lab sessions, uh, uh, what we will do is we will actually um, download uh, 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 e-commerce applications. Uh, as I mentioned, is a polygon of the microservices from a GitHub repository. So I think it will take a, a bit while. It's still creating. I think about five, about five to six minutes, it will be complete. It will be complete. Check. Okay. Still, still creating. Okay. Let's let's move back to the uh, what I'm going to say. Okay. So basically, this is the um, basically we are going to use. Uh, there are a couple of options for you to deploy your uh, applications. In the cluster, of course, you can use a manual way like Docker's, you know, uh, a deployment. And then, of course, you can use a Kubernetes and Helm. Helm is actually a Kubernetes uh, package manager that allows you to, to easily deploy and manage your deployment or to scale or to remove your, your, your uh, applications in the clusters. And of course, you can also use uh, Terraform. But today, we are going, just going to use Helm. Um, okay, Helm is also a part of the client. It's also part of, it's already installed in the uh, Cloud Shell because you need the client to talk to some of the components installed in the cluster as well. So this, as I said, that Cloud Shell is already, uh, has all the pre-installed applications. You can use it uh, easily. Okay, this is already done, it's active. I hope yours is already uh, completed as well. Uh, okay, so we will proceed um, with accessing uh, in 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 um, using the cloud console to access the uh, Kubernetes. So to do that, um, okay, to do that, if you want to access into this Kubernetes cluster, you can click on access classes. Okay, there's two options. Of course, you can access it using your cloud shell access. 
or you can use your local PC to, to, to access into this Kubernetes cluster as well. But of course, you need to set up the uh, authentications and all those and install a lot of components, like for example, Cube CTL and things like that into your local machines in order to do that. So as I mentioned, this was already pre-installed, so you don't have to do that. So to, to, to check whether um, access your Cloud Console, what you do is uh, this is already open. So first of all, you need to um, how to access the config, cube config. So basically, you just need to copy this command. So this command will, will consist of all the cluster IDs and your your thing, the endpoint information for this cloud shell to um, talk to. So it's just copy. You click on the copy here, and then you right click on the shell command, and then just paste it. They just enter. So basically, that it says that uh, this is already existing, so it's successful. So let me go back to the go back to the lab one. Sorry. So this is actually step four. Let me repeat step four. So uh, first of all, once we are connected to the config, we can actually see whether we can see the cluster. Okay, whether it's, it's up and running. Can again, you copy on, on this uh, uh, step four, you go to number three. Okay, so you copy this and then you just right click it, paste it, paste the command and enter. And then you can see that this are uh, the uh, some of the uh, components in the master node. You can see that the scheduler is healthy and then the SCD is actually healthy as well. The control manager is healthy. So this is the information. This is a cluster that you have created. And so far, everything is okay and there's no error in it. So next thing, next is to uh, check. You can check the version. Actually, you don't have to do that. You can skip that if you want to. And then um, you can check the nodes, whether it's already up and running. Remember that it's, uh, we actually provision three worker nodes. So you can copy this. You can right-click again, right-click and paste it. Just make it bigger. Okay, so the nodes is already uh, up and running. These are the uh, uh, worker nodes which are already uh, up and running. So you can see there is uh, ready. Okay, and then so you can see how easy that we can actually um, spin up the Kubernetes clusters using this uh, OKE managed services using Oracle Cloud. Okay. Okay, the next step is once we have provisioned this, we we can proceed. Um, we can proceed to lab number two. For lab number two is basically, as I mentioned, is we are going to get the e-commerce application source code from a GitHub, and then we are going to deploy into this uh, cluster. Let me give you a quick overview of the lab two. Again, you need to click on it and then um, Click on the introductions. So as I mentioned earlier, we are going to use Ham as a package package manager for for this uh, uh, deployment. And then, um, okay, this is this is the uh, e-commerce um, um, website components microservices. These are microservices uh, components. So it consists of um, so so as you can see that as you can see in this diagram that. Uh, it, it, it does support all kind of uh, programming languages such as the uh, Node.js for media, and then you can have the uh, tracking microservices, the catalog, and payment under Go. And then, of course, you can you can also uh, build your microservices in the uh, Java as well, things like that. Apart from all these uh, services that we are going to download, you can see that it can it also utilize a lot of this cloud resources, such as the, the engines, engines uh, uh, ingress is using the uh, uh, cloud load balances. So you can see that it's actually utilizing a lot of all these uh, cloud resources uh, in Oracle Cloud infrastructure, like for example, the, the bucket, the storage, as well as some, some of it might be using uh, the databases as well. Okay. So, so, 
what it does is okay we will need to we will need to actually um download this source into our cloud shell shell this link so you download so i'll quickly uh, show you the steps then i'll go switch over to the uh, cloud console to show you okay so basically it's just to um get the resource and then after that to um do some configuration provide a namespace and apart from that we also need to uh, it also comes with uh, some other third party um third party services which is actually defined in the the helm uh, configurations so for example you have uh, things like uh, prometheus grafana so these are actually the monitoring uh, uh, third party services so the, the good thing is actually is it comes integrated with the oracle, oracle cloud infrastructure so so these are these are the uh, third party um, services that we are also going to install together with the e-commerce platform okay so uh, once we are done with that then after that we we can actually um, we can actually uh, go into the uh, uh, we can explore the website this is sorry so step four so this is the e-commerce this is the end result they are, they are getting okay so let's go ahead and um, go to the top console i will show you So first step is to get the source from the uh, GitHub. Just copy this. So right click it into your cloud shell and then just paste it. Enter. So what happened, it will actually download the, the source from the GitHub. So you do an, do an LS and check. So basically this is the uh, uh, source that we downloaded. It's called Mooshop. So we can go ahead and explore this uh, directory. So it actually comes with all the uh, deployment um, components like the YAML files and all those. So, um, okay, next step is to um, make sure that we set the context for the, the, uh, the clusters. You can copy the uh, step three. You copy the current context. What is the current context here? And then just paste it. It's very simple, just follow the steps. So this is the replies saying that this is a context. Okay. And then after that, uh, what you do is you provide a namespace for, for the uh, that we want to deploy. So basically, a uh, namespace is basically an, an entity that you store your your applications to segregate your application in the clusters. Okay. So we will we will create a namespace here. So you call it uh, Mooshop. Just paste it. Enter. So a namespace will be will be created. So the next step is um, basically to set the namespace as a, a default so that we don't have to set the thing. Okay. So as long as we send out the cube com control uh, CTR command, it will actually refer to back to this namespace. Again, you copy and paste the default. Paste it. Just enter. Okay. Okay. So the next step is um, to also to um, to create a namespace for these uh, third-party services that we are also going to install together with the e-commerce. So we will name it as Moo Shop Utilities. You just copy it, and then again you just right-click and uh, paste it here. namespace for Mooshop utility is being created. Okay. Now, um, okay, what happened is we are going to also, uh, because there's a, there's a, we need to download some of these components. So there's a, there's a, there's a Helm setup already uh, comes together with this uh, uh, Mooshop download. So what happened, it will actually download these components into the cloud shell before we push it to the clusters. So what it does is it will just go and download the get the latest uh, versions or uh, copies based on the the configuration file in Helm. You just right click, 
and then you just paste it in and then just enter. So don't worry about this uh, warning statement, that's fine. So you can see that it's downloading those these uh, third party components like Grafana, uh, Primitius, and Jenkins as well. So this is done. Okay. Um, so once um, this is done, we can actually uh, use Helm to actually uh, install install these uh, third party components into our Kubernetes clusters. So this is a step uh, on step three, just copy this command. So basically you will actually um, install these uh, packages into the uh, our Kubernetes cluster that we created. So you right click it and then just click paste. So you take a couple of minutes to do that. Actually, for, for, for detailed installation of this e-commerce website, uh, we have the full documentation. Okay, sorry, I, I go through that later on. So this is done. So this is basically done. Okay, it's actually deployed into the cluster. So um, then on step three, we will see whether um, how we can actually uh, get the the external IP of the deployment that we have done, okay? So uh, there's some, there's some uh, description here there's, uh, after the installation is done. It says that there's an there's a in, ingress uh, being, being uh, installed. So in, ingress, sorry, sorry, uh, engine, engine, this case is engine, uh, nginx uh, ingress. So basically it's actually a web uh, components that perform as the uh, load balancers for your traffic. Basically, accept HTTP requests from outside, and then it talks to the um, uh, uh, components inside the clusters. So this is the uh, uh, you pronounce it as uh, engine X uh, components. Okay. So next step is to actually to get the uh, external IP. So we can we can of the component that we have installed. We just copy this uh, command here on step three. And then you right click it and then you paste it and then you enter. let me see if, how come it's hiding inside this thing. Okay. Let me minimize it is easier for you to see it this way. So you can see that uh, there's a there's an ingress. Um, this is the load balancer basically. So this is the uh, external IP. Um, so basically for this. Um, this is the IP that you can, uh, public IP that you can access later on, okay? And then um, the next step is basically to, uh, to get the deployment, see whether uh, the services that de deploy successfully, okay? So to do that, you just copy the, um, explore the deployment cluster, and then again, you just right click and then you paste it. So what you can see here, uh, these, are, these are actually the, the, the third party services that we actually uh, deploy into the clusters. So you can see that these are the um, services, um, micro uh, services, and then it's actually uh, successfully uh, installed like Grafana and all this uh, Prometheus is being installed successfully into the cluster. And the, the current state is actually ready. So you can. This is how you can actually view your deployment in in uh, uh, clusters. Okay. Followed by the fourth step is we are going to finally we are going to install the uh, web applications, the e-commerce uh, site, into our clusters. So to do that, um, similar, what we do is we copy the command again for deployment using Helm. So you right click it and then you just paste it. So you can see that the command saying that. We are going to deploy into under this um, uh, Mooshop, uh, Mooshop uh, uh, namespace. Okay, just enter it. 
and then it will do the installation for you, similar to the third party services that we had done earlier. Okay. So it's very quick. So it's done. Make sure there's no errors in it. So I think it's fine. There's no errors. So you can see that the port, uh, you can actually uh, uh, monitor the port. So port is basically, uh, it's one of the small, it's the smallest computing unit in the clusters where, where the container is uh, residing. So you can monitor this uh, port. So you can actually, you can actually um, configure whether how many CPU in the port and things like that. So this is basically a just computing unit in the clusters. So to monitor that, um, you can, the next command is actually to, to let you monitor the port. You can copy the command and then right click again. How come I must see the bottom? Yeah, right click and then you just paste the command here. So basically, um, for this, you can see these are these are the these are the port running. So you can actually run multiple containers in the port. But I think for this e-commerce, they are what they are running is for each um, containers is running in uh, a single port. So this that's why you can see there's there's a couple of uh, port which is actually uh, running. So um, some of the components, for example, the, the card that you we, we saw earlier in the diagram, the card services. The, the catalogs and all those, these are actually uh, deployed in the port. So you can see that these are actually running. So this one is, these are actually the init port, I think. So that's why it's, it's complete. So it's fine. So it's fine. You can go ahead and do a control C. So, um, okay. So basically we have deployed this e-commerce as well as the, um, uh, what I call it, the third party services. So now we can um, access using a browser. So the same step that we need to ex, um, get the external IP, I think it's the, it's the previous step that we, we, we uh, put it in, okay? Otherwise you can refer to step, uh, step four. And uh, item number four, item number four in step four. So just copy the command uh, and then you just right click it again to see the external IP. So basically, basically you can access the the uh, e-commerce from this uh, IP address. Just copy this uh, IP address. Just right click it, copy, and then you open up your browser. And then you just uh, copy it in and then enter. So as you can see that you can access it. This is uh, successfully completed, the installations. So this is the, I believe this is a pet shop. Where you sell pet food. Uh, e-commerce it's very nice so you can actually explore this uh, website so of course um, this is um, this is a is actually a mock, mock copy it doesn't actually um, talk to any of the databases and things like that it's actually just a uh, working working uh, copies that you can just click around and play with it well, for, for detailed installation, let's say you want to connect some of these components, like for example, your payment or your, your cards, microservices that you want to talk to your databases and things like that, you can actually refer back to the lab content. Um, if you go to, if you go to um, learn more, learn more. So this, you can see that this is the uh, GitHub for Mushop. So you can explore on more more on the uh, application source code. And there's, there's a documentation here that you can actually explore. So you, you will actually, um, it has all the details on each of these components and you can uh, refer to using, installing it using the Kubernetes uh, clusters, okay? So I, I would advise that you can actually uh, go into this site and explore the components, okay? So the next step, so we have completed um, this step number four. So the next step is basically, um, there are some of the, um, you can actually explore on some of the commands uh, to get, that is the, the deployment and then to get the, the, the pod and, and, and things like that using some of these uh, kubectl commands. I will, I will not continue with this. So basically these are just, descriptions and it doesn't just where you can get your logs and, and 
and things like that. Or you can even, even you can even actually access into the worker, individual worker nodes and see what is inside as well using some of these uh, components. Okay. So, um, okay. Let's see what's in the chat. Let's see what's in the chat. Um, okay. Is there any Q&A? So far, is everything, uh, I, I guess everything is, uh, Jimmy, is everything uh, everything okay there? Yeah, uh, all, all the questions have been answered so far. Okay, good, good, yep. good. So, okay, I'm just going to quickly go through the the final lab session for OKE before we proceed for the uh, the final uh, functions. Okay, for, 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 um, Basically, for these sections on the uh, monitoring, so you actually guide you through on how you can actually monitor your, your deployment, the Kubernetes cluster deployment. So the first step is probably using the Oracle Cloud uh, console to monitor some of these uh, clusters. So basically, if you go to lab three, um, you go to step one, so you ask you to log into your console again. So you click on the uh, burger icon and then you go back to your deployment service to go to your Kubernetes clusters. I go ahead and minimize the cloud shell. I'm not going to use it for now. So to monitor the cluster, basically you can click on the clusters. And then you scroll down. When you scroll down, you can look at the metrics. So basically, um, you explain that uh, some of the, some of the uh, uh, monitoring uh, metrics that you can uh, make full use of using uh, the cloud console, for example, the API, API server response request and uh, response. Make sure that if there's, if there's any errors occurs and you can actually filter based on the, the date and time as well. So basically this is the indicator whether the, is there any, any uh, is the response is good or not in the, using the API server request. Basically API server allows you to actually communicate using the, uh, uh, CTL to actually uh, do some scheduling deployment of the ports and things like that. So it's a good indicator for you to monitor your Kubernetes uh, clusters. So as well as you can see if there's any unscheduled port. So normally you can see some errors if let's say the ports there's uh, um, if there's not enough resources and then you will not be able to bring up the port because you need to specify the number of uh, resources like CPU and, and things like that. So you can, you can monitor if let's say, uh, if there's any unscheduled port, which meaning that port is supposed to be scheduled, but it's not being uh, deployed into the cluster. So these are some of the metrics that uh, will help you to monitor the clusters. Okay. And then we also have the, um, some of the, uh, you can also zoom in to the uh, node pool itself. You click on the uh, node pool and then you click on the pool. So this is basically, this is a pool that uh, our most of the nodes, worker nodes are residing in. So you can see the, the, the state conditions. Uh, node state, so basically node state is uh, to, to tell you whether uh, this, this the, 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 the state is, uh, the, the server is running in Oracle Cloud, Cloud Infrastructure, is it running properly or not? And the second part, the Kubernetes uh, node conditions, this is also similar, but it's from the point of view of the uh, Kubernetes controller. Sometimes they are unable to actually uh, detect the heartbeat of the uh, nodes uh, workers, things like that. So, so these are the things that you can actually monitor on the pool. And of course, you can look at the details of the nodes. You click on the nodes. So basically, these are the uh, instances, compute instances of the worker nodes. You can look at the CPU utilize, utilizations and, and uh, uh, things like that. Hold on, it's a bit slow.
I go back to the, uh, I think, oh, yeah, it's, it's coming out, sorry. So you can, can yeah, so, so basically, basically these are telling you what is the, the utilizations of the, the servers, the nodes that you are, the worker nodes that you are created, the individual worker nodes that you can, you can see. The, for example, the memory, the CPU, and the IOs, and all those things that you can monitor. And of course, you can set alarms. If, let's say, you need to uh, scale it up, you can actually set alarm to, to auto-scale the resources, as I meant, okay? So this is the monitoring in Oracle Cloud Console. So the, the, the following part is more on the Grafana. So let me uh, show you. So basically these are the third party services which is integrated into Oracle Cloud. It can be integrated into Oracle Cloud uh, infrastructures that you can uh, make use of for monitoring. So to do that, um, these are some of the steps. You can go to the, again, you can go back to the, yeah, probably running out of good thing. So basically um, for these sections, uh, I will not continue with the set. So what happened is uh, this, this section tells you that um, we are, we are able to, is a Oracle Kubernetes cluster is a is a open standard, so it works with all kind of uh, third parties components like Grafana and Kubernetes for monitoring or maybe for um, for auto scaling. So it's already installed. It's already installed. So what happens is you follow the step here, and it allows you to access this Grafana. And then from there, you can actually um, monitor your Kubernetes cluster in more details. And you show you all kind of uh, visualizations like uh, the pod, the CPU, as well as the uh, container as well. So it's more detailed kind of monitoring that you can access following these steps using it. So of course, um, if you have time, right, you can also follow it, this uh, auto-scaling. So you can see that you can actually perform auto-scaling using this, some of these components as well. So, so let's say you can actually see the initial state of the servers is uh, there's one only one spinning up one replica. Then after it, when you, when you uh, deploy something, then you can actually see that you should spin up more replica for auto-scaling. So this, this is the section that will tell you more on the monitoring using uh, uh, third parties uh, uh, tools. So okay, this is um, all about all about uh, Oracle uh, container engines uh, using uh, Kubernetes. So as I as I what I've covered earlier is um, basically I've guided you through on setting up the environment and the provisioning of uh, Kubernetes clusters. So it's very fast. You can do it within like a couple of minutes. You can spin up uh, Kubernetes clusters versus the DIY. If you, you can also bring up, bring your own uh, clusters into Oracle Cloud, but that will be a very complex task. Most, okay, compared compare to this uh, managed services that you can offer. Okay. And of course, um, you can further explore the steps on the deployment, which I've shown earlier on. And then finally, on lab three is more on the monitoring. So with that, I think I'll conclude for this uh, sections on OKE uh, Kubernetes. Let's see if there's is there any any uh, comment, is there any comment, or if not, I think I will pass over back to uh, Jimmy, so he will guide you through on the lab four on functions. Uh, Jimmy, back to you. Yep. Thank you, KY. Wow, we just saw how how fast, how easy that we can deploy the Kubernetes uh, <laughs> containers and all the e-commerce application. Basically, uh, so, a lot of time, sir. Mm. Yes, so uh, the, the, the advantage is that you do not need to uh, spin up your Kubernetes cluster manually. That will take you, I think, a couple of hours, if not. Uh, <laughs> <I think> this, <laughs> yeah. 
take more than that. So uh, you just 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 go to the wizard and feel click and then just wait for five minutes and you can see the cluster is uh, up and running. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much, KY, uh, YK. Uh, I will share my screen uh, for the serverless functions. Okay. So I will talk before we go for the hands-on lab, let's, let's talk a little bit about the functions. So function as a service, or uh, this is our, our local products called local functions. Uh, what it actually do is that um, you can run uh, applications that uh, without needing to provision uh, the server resource. Uh, so it's just, just a small piece of code. So it's more more or less uh, lighter than the containers. And then uh, it, it only, if there's a small functions that require short time frame, uh, then you do not need to just uh, let the server up and running all the times. And that is, that is why that uh, we say that uh, pay for use and don't pay when the function is idle. So you, you, don't, you don't pay even though you are not using it. So the, the, the benefit of function is that uh, we you only pay when the function is running. That's it, right? So how how it what is the offerings that we have is that uh we support number of uh FTK here, right? For Java, Python, things like that, similar like on containers, and support number of languages. Uh, and then uh we manage for you as well. Yeah. So this is a managed service. You don't need to go and uh deploy uh the server and resources. Um how, how we differentiate is that uh, there's no vendor lockdown. So because our function also use the open source code, so it can run anyway, if you like to. Um, yeah, it's fully integrated with our all other cloud service. So it can be interact with our uh, autonomous database and object storage, things like that. So there is, it's a big ecosystem that uh, I think I show in the early slide as well on that, right? Okay. So this is the small use case for the uh, hands-on lab that I'm going, I'm going to show later. So what uh, we can use the function is that we use an ETL. So it's like an extract, transform, and loot data using uh, functions. Okay. So uh, what we're going to see later is that uh, we're going to use the object storage. This is the component that's the store the file. It can be a structure or unstructured data. So uh, what we see is that we're going to use a sample CSV file and then we upload to this object storage. And then there's an event sitting here that uh, once the, because the object storage, we can uh, trigger one actions saying that uh, if there's anything, uh, any actions or event detected, it will transmit the actions to the events, right? So it will get alerted and then it will trigger another section, uh, another action for the function to execute, right? So this is the application running in the functions and then it will process and put the output into our uh, database. So this is a, uh, this is some uh, small use case that we can uh, show in the hands-on lab later, okay? All right. Uh, so I'm going to start with the hands-on lab and I'm going to switch back to the console. Uh, so this is the console that I have. Okay, right. So we have this side by side here. So this is the uh, pre prereq that required before we start the lab number four. So basically we need to create a compartment. So uh, I think we have seen this earlier on. So I'm going to do another round. So we have another new compartment. Uh, so we don't miss, miss out the... the all the resources together, right? So uh, a compartment is like a logical containers like, for all the resources that you want to put it so that you know that uh, this compartment maybe is uh, belongs to uh, a certain project or, or for a certain uh, department, things like that. So you can organize the resources that you want, okay? Uh, just call it a demo, quick one. And then we're going to deploy a VCN uh, networking component. So we go to the networks VCN. So we have this uh, VCN wizard that we just need to, okay, before that, I need to choose the compartment that I just uh, created. So it's called demo here. So we're going to deploy the networking uh, component in this uh, demo compartment. So we're going to choose the internet connectivity. 
this is the basic one. If you have a uh, side to side uh, connections to your on prem, then you can go for this as well, right? So for this demo, we're going to start with the basic one. Uh, VCN name, uh, just call it functions. Demo. So this is the cyber block. Uh, what is the network range that you want to deploy within this VCN? Okay. So we have a public subnet and the private subnet. Okay. So simple as that. Just fill out the few things, then then the rest of the item will be uh, uh, created for you automatically for the rest. So let's create this. Okay, so very fast within 10 seconds, we can see all the network is up and running. Okay, so next is we're going to create a policy. Okay, so this is the network components very fast within 10 seconds. You can see everything is up and running here. Yeah, so yeah, this is a software defined networks. Okay, uh, next we're going to create a policy. So, policy basically is to tell that uh, the control that uh, you want to give for the services to use. So this is the policy. So it's part of the identity. And what we're gonna create is a create policy called a function as a service policy. Come down here, All right? Uh, so we have this uh, at once uh, policy. I mean that we, we just copy this text and then paste in the manual editor because there are this hands-on that already provided all, all the Group. Ah, okay. I think I missed out the group. Okay. Uh, dynamic groups. Okay. Before that, I need to create a group. Okay. I need to create a group. So the group is to basically tell that uh, the user belong to what group so that it allow him or her to execute the, the permissions, right? Uh, let me create this one more. Okay. okay, I just create myself. So I included myself in this group. Okay, let's come back here. All right, so for the group, I just need to type demo. The group that I just created. Demo. So basically, this uh, policy is telling that uh, I'm allowing the group called demo for the number of users that belong to this group allowed to use the services that we define here. So you can read the metrics, you can read the object storage. Uh, you can use the virtual network that I created just now with VCN, functions, and the cloud shell. All right. So we we'll just create this. Uh, wait a second. Uh, the tenancy doesn't exist. Wait a second. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, let me cancel this and just uh, Ah, okay. My mistake. I need to create that into under the root. Let me copy this uh, quick one and click this. All right, let me click one more time, okay, more. Uh, oh, okay, let's copy this. Okay, more. So it's just to change the group name to the group that I just created and I create. All right, so the policy needs to be defined in the uh, root uh, compartment there. Right, so next is that, yep, so we have completed the pre prereq and then we can start with the labs. Yes, so for the first one, we're going to create the functions, applications. So this is uh, for under the uh, developer service here. And you can see all kind of dev developer service that we have. And uh, I can just show the container. Now I'm going to do the uh, function applications, right? 
Okay, so we're going to create an application, give it a name. So we're going to put it in the demo. So I create this application called ETL Apps and going to deploy it into the VCN for functions and with the public uh, subnet. All right, so let's click on this. Okay. Wow, very fast. Just click and then it's there. And let's go in into the uh, applications. So a uh, function, it can be a uh, multiple functions that belong to one application. So you can have a, uh, uh, yeah, you can you can create multiple functions as based on the requirements. So what we're going to do next is to want to do a checking to come here and get the, uh, uh, follow the getting started so that we want to make sure that we need to uh, set the context for the functions and then to key in some of the uh, compartment ID as well, right? So before, maybe I just come here and get the compartment ID first. It's here. So we need to provide the compartment unique IDs. So we call it OCID. So this is the demo, yep. So this is the OCID. So this is a unique ID that we're going to use it, okay, later. So let's come back here. Yeah, you can get the cloud shell here. And then we just follow the guide here, getting started. So if you, I think some of you may are asking, uh, can I use uh, my local uh, CLL, CLI, CLI tools? Yeah, you can. So you just need to install the CLI tools in your local PC, then you can follow this guide, right? So this is for, if you run it locally in your machine, you can do here. Uh, for this lab, we're going to use the cloud shell, right? Uh, first thing, we're going to list the context and see what context that we have here. Right, so uh, here you go, we have these two. And then I'm going to change my context to the compartment. Uh, let's go. This one as well. Let's see if uh, this is just to make sure that I'm using the Ashburn. And then we're going to uh, set the context functions for the compartment that I'm going to use is called demo today. Uh, and then I'm going to create a new repo. So this is to set what is the repo that I'm going to use today. So I'm going to change this to demo. All right. Uh, okay, so we need to generate a token. So basically that we want to authenticate the function services that can uh, are allowed to, as, to use the functions in OCI. Just to make sure that uh, this is the correct uh, uh, users or services that are allowed to use here. So I'm going to call demo here. Okay, so really important, you need to copy this uh, token password because you if once you close, you will not getting this uh, password anymore, right? So I'm going to store it in my notepad here. All right, so we will close it. And next is come back to here and we're going to log in. So we're going to log in using my ID and then the, the password that I just copied just now. Put it in here. All right, so it's succeeded. So it is, I'm allowed to use these uh, services, right? So this is an important step. And then I'm going to list my application again one more time. Yep, so this is uh, the ETL apps, right? The, the application we just created, all right? So next, we're going to deploy a small function called Hello Java on Java, uh, running on Java. So just copy the text here. Uh, okay, I have, uh, yeah, I have done that earlier. So I can straight away uh, navigate to the directory. So basically, if you execute this step, it will just uh, download from the GitLab uh, Hub and uh, for the source code, and then uh, you will get this uh, directory, Hello Java. Then this is the uh, command to deploy the functions called functions belong to this uh, directory called Hello Java and then uh, park inside the application called ETL apps. Okay. 
Yep. So we start uh, loading the source code that we have downloaded and then pull it from the Docker. And then just wait, wait for a while. Here. Okay, so step two of 11. So let's wait for the wait while. While waiting, I can uh, go to the containers registry. So container registry is a Oracle uh, cloud registry that you can keep your uh, Docker image. All right. So this is the one that I created earlier. Let's wait for this to complete. So besides that, you can use the public uh, accessible uh, GitHub uh, for more uh, secure that we you, you can put it here so it does not expose to uh, public access. So it's more secure that you can just keep your uh, image at your own tenancy. All right, so it runs quite a number of right, So the build is success now. Okay, it just take about 48 seconds to complete. Okay, it's almost done. Yeah, you can see the test. It also tests at the same time and we can see test run is success. So we now start to pull. And I guess it's, yep. So now it's try to push to the GCC container in this demo. So let me come back here, refresh. Yep, so we just deploy this here, the image, okay? Yep, very quickly. So uh, because we have set the context, so it knows that uh, we are going to deploy in this demo, okay? So let's come back here and do a quick check on the app the functions that we're going to in this is a function command to invoke the function called hello java in the application etl apps right so let's we go just a quick test to say that a uh, hello world return with the text okay uh, so we have finished lab one uh, no, sorry, step one. Okay, so we're going to continue with step two, uh, create a dynamic group, right? Uh, a dynamic group basically is uh, to allow a group. So there's a group that I created earlier is for the user. Okay, so for that, uh, yeah, so it's you can return with the hello world. So uh, it means that the function is deployed successfully and we can see the result here, all right? Okay, let's move on to step two. A dynamic group basically is uh, a group of uh, compute or services that is uh, not a user ID. So we need to group the, the resources together and then allow to, to tell that we want to allow the, uh, for example, this in this case is function to, add, to access the object storage, right? So the difference is the group is for user and dynamic group is for the resources or services like functions, okay? So we're going to go to identity again and create the dynamic groups. So we're going to call it functions dynamic group. I have this already, so I can call the demo. Okay. So I just append it with demo functions for this case. And I'm going to use the code here. Um, yeah, I need to put the compartment saying that uh, this function is allowed to execute or access the compartment for the demo compartment. Okay, so I need to go back and check the compartment. What is the ID? I should have uh, copied that earlier. So I need to come back here and copy that. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, replace here. Oops. So let's replace this one. Okay. So that's great. Demo functions. Okay. So, yep, done. 
So next is, uh, so we're going to create the object storage. So we're going to use, create the object storage so that we can upload the uh, CSV file later, okay? So we create a bucket, call the input bucket. So this is the input bucket using T, all right. So input bucket this is the name, and then we're going to check this box called admit objects, all right? Admit object events, meaning that uh, when this bucket uh, sends there's a new object uh, being uh, uploaded in this bucket, and then it will, it will create a automation task uh, or action or trigger actions to this event service, all right? So we're going to create this bucket and make sure we, uh, ah, okay. So I have this uh, created as well. Ah. Uh, so I need to put an S, okay, i put an S there. All right, so next is to create the uh, policy again for the functions. So let's come back here, identity policy. Uh, this is the function bucket policies. Same thing. Let's copy the text here. So I'm going to allow the dynamic groups called so I call demo to manage object in compartment name. So the compartment name is called demo here. So I just replace this. And input bucket is this one S with S. So now I'm going to tell that uh, I want to allow the dynamic group, which is the all the function service that is able to manage the object. So I I can create objects or I can delete objects, things like that, right? So I'm going to skip this. All right, the statement is there. Uh, okay, it's done. So next is uh, step five. We're going to create an autonomous database. So we come to Oracle database. Uh, this is the data warehouse. So yeah, we're going to create the database in this demo compartment. Let's call it demo DB. DB. So, uh, why we call it autonomous database? Just to give you a, a quick overview, is that uh, basically uh, what the difference is that autonomous database is that once you spin it up, you do not require to uh, manage it. So, it's we we're going to manage for you. Uh, it come with a self patching and self tuning functions, right? So here I'm going to continue to enter the passwords. Mm, right. So the database can be allowed to access anywhere, or we can put it in the endpoint, which means we uh, is in the uh, private network. Okay. So for this case, we just uh, for demo, we just access it from outside. Right. Uh, we yeah, I license included. So let's create this. All right. Yep. Okay, so this will take a couple of minutes and we can move on next. Uh, let's, uh, I need to, we need to wait for this uh, autonomous database to be ready. So while waiting, uh, yeah, so the, the auto, autonomous is the, 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 the cool function is that um, for normal database, uh, your, your DBA may need to do uh, tuning from time to time. Uh, for this case, uh, autonomous we will uh, self tune it because we have the uh, we have a machine learning uh, component running in the back end, and it's like an AI that it can tell that uh, when the certain uh, detect some certain uh, uh, weakness on performance tuning, then it, it can self uh, tune for you, right? So you don't need a DBA, you don't have you do not have to get the full time DBA to do this for you. And again, same for same scope for the uh, patching. So when there's a new vulnerable detected, then then uh, we will uh, auto patch for you as well, right? Yeah. So uh, 
you, 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 you don't have to pay a lot of uh, attention to the database because uh, most of the time when I just provision it, I just leave it running and running. Then it can, the performance is always uh, tip top, right? Not much to worry. So while waiting, we can go into this database. We need to copy the uh, RESTful service. Uh, one one uh, functions that we have for this automatic database is that we have this RESTful service so that we, if you have any API request that you can uh, directly uh, interact with the database. So this is where we're going to do it. Uh, let me wait for a while. Uh, we need to copy this into the shell to execute. So I just uh, get ready first. This is a lot of it. So I can change the DB password. Yep. Uh, okay, what the S. Yes, wait for a while. And then I need to copy this text as well. Let's get the VD. Let's see what I can do while waiting this. Mm, okay, while waiting, we can go for step. Can I go for step six? Wait a second. Uh, yeah, I can do this first because we're going to uh, clone the, uh, the GitHub uh, samples. So come back to here in the shell. I believe I have done that earlier. So yeah, we'll just, uh, yeah, very quickly. Uh, clone the uh, sample. So if you want to have as you want to explore more, you can come to this uh, GitHub portal. Uh, this you will come up with all, all 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 the Oracle functions that we have. So one of the functions that I'm going to deploy is called uh, list. Where is it? Let me see. Uh, Here samples and OCI load file. Yeah, this is the sample source code that I'm going to deploy later. But we, if you if you want to know more about what kind of fun samples that we have, you can always come come to here Oracle sam function samples, and you can see uh, all, all all the samples. And you can try it out yourself later on, right? If you if you have anything that you find is interesting, then you can do it yourself. So I come back here. Okay, while waiting, I think we can go here. Okay, it's up and running. So uh, let's come back here. Uh, we need to click on the service console. This to see, uh, yeah, this uh, so yeah, when you go up here again, development, sorry, this bear me for a while. Uh, so the driver. Uh, how can I get that? Not this. Uh, you see, I can. Okay, let me try out this one. Okay, yeah, I, I try this uh, browser here and see if I can get that button. Right. Uh, this is my. So here. So database warehouse. I go to my demo. Yep. Uh, okay. 
Okay. All right. So developments. All right. I need to get this link. All right. Um, wait a second. Click this link. Uh, put it back here. So this is the ORDS base URL. This is the one. So I will come back to my Firefox browser. Uh, a second. Oops. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to open back my shell. So what we need to do now is to export the export the ORDS space here and put it in here. Okay, and then to curve to set. We're going to set the uh, JSON application so that uh, it's going to uh, upload the file as a JSON format that we're going to see later. Okay. All right, it's done. Then we're going to list it. Let's see, is that, is that JSON uh, format ready to use? Okay, so unauthorized. Let me see. Okay, am I? So let's get back to this one. Um, so we're going to deploy the source code. Uh, let me get to the text here. Um, so this is the, yeah, so this is the directory of the uh, source code. So we have the function YAML file here. So this is a source and then, uh, sorry, this is the Python source code here. Yeah. So this will tell that uh, we're going to deploy the functions. this all right so it's going to same like what we saw earlier for the java uh you're going to pull this will copy from the uh, from the source that we downloaded and then you're going to push to the talkers so let's wait for a while here okay. While waiting, I can do this. Yes. Okay. Let me copy this one and I'll explain later on. Password. Change the password. Okay. So let's wait for a while for the function to be ready. Um, it's this and yeah, let's go back to the functions applications. So this is just a, some of the warning saying that uh, we there is a new versions instead. So but uh, no worries, it will still be running. Just just to tell that there's a new versions already there. So if you want to use the new version, we're going to change the code to comply with the new version. So uh, for this that we're going to use what we have. Okay, so this is a function. Um, we, let me go in, see what we can have it here. Yeah, we are, we are able, if, if we want to do a debug on the application, we have this uh, log that you can enable it. Okay. So let me see, I click the one for the more. Yep. So basically that uh, we have this uh, monitoring, monitoring tools that uh, once you detect any of the problem with your uh, functions, then you can come here and uh, explore the logs here. All right. So we provide this as well. And yeah, it's done. So we can see that the function is created and we can see, yeah, this is the one, right? So this is a function, OCI loop file into autonomous data warehouse. 
that use in uh, Python. Right, so next is we're going to set the use the following uh, configuration value because we want to fit in the parameters. So this is what I have a copy over. And I will just uh, do copy this code and paste it here. Uh, I think, wait a second, let me see. Uh, okay. This is the one that I need to change, I guess. Uh, no, the double code, right? Yeah. So there's some changes that we need to put the double code here. Okay. Yeah. So that can recognize the syntax one. All right. So let's see. Clear this off. Uh, invalids. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will just show the function that I have created earlier. Basically, that I come back to these functions. Uh, what the, the, the command is going to execute is that basically it will set the parameters here, right? So this is the number of keys that we define and then it will, it will show up here, right? Rather than you type one by one. Um, next is we're going to create the events. So let's see, the event is under the observability and management. So it's slightly different from what you see here. Uh, there's a one, uh, if, if, if you're not able to check where, where it is that you can quickly, uh, yeah, it's called rules here. So you can type and then you can find a shortcut straight to the menu that you want. So this is the one. And I have created this earlier called uh, load CSV into ADW, right? So we can check the rules. So what this rule tell is that, um, as as earlier said that, um, let me go back to the function code here. So we're going to create the events here saying that um, you're going to detect what changes happen here. Then you, you will pass the actions to the functions. Okay, so let's come back here. Um, so the rules is that uh, it will be an event saying that attached to the service name called object storage but it can be many as well. If you, if you are using any of the services here, you can, you can uh, uh, select. So in our case, we're going to use object storage. So when you detect uh, an event called create new, right? And together we, because we have multiple conditions. So we set that saying that, um, yeah, the object is created is inside the compartment name. So in this case, I have, created before is called functions and then the bucket is called input buckets, right? So once it's detected these conditions, then it will send the action type. So the action type can be streaming if you want to stream the logs or you want to notify someone by email saying that, oh, someone created an object, then you can uh, send an email automatically to the receiver. And in this case, we're going to use a function because we're going to uh, tell uh, to trigger these functions. So the function is this compartment and then the application and the fun this is the OCI load functions that we just deploy. Okay. So basically the event will is like an automations that uh, once it detected something happened in the bucket and then it will send the actions over. Okay. So this is the event. Let's move on. Okay. So done. We have created the rules. Now we're going to we're going to simulate the uh, actions. So what you're going to do is that we come to the uh, block buckets and instead of running the, running the command, I can use the, I can use the file. I can just drop here. So I open the buckets 
and I hope. All right, so I'm going to create the uploads. All right, so I'm going to drop the file. I drop the CSV file here. Okay, file number two. I upload here. Okay, finish, uploaded. Then we're going to then we're going to uh, check the automated data warehouse. So we're going to come back to the data warehouse and see the file has been loaded. Okay, let's click this. Sorry, this is the one. FTP. Yep, this is the one that I drop. And then I go to yeah, database exchange. So basically the file will be uploaded to object and then we should see the data in the database. Okay. So enter your passwords. Okay. Yep. So uh, the database have number of uh, uh, component that we can use. So we're going to check the JSON. Yep. So we can see the, the contents that I just uploaded here. Right. Yep. So this is the sample. Right, so I just I can open the, uh, the CSV file. Yeah, so basically to tell that uh, this is the CSV file uh, records and it's showing up in the our database in the JSON format here, right? Okay, so this ends the lab. Let me come back to the sections and. Yeah, so we have uh, basically create the applications and then create a data warehouse and then deploy a function, uh, create a rules for the events that once it's detected, it will trigger the function. And then we can see once we just saw that uh, when I dropped the files and then it will just basically uh, update the file into the data warehouse, right? Yeah, so for a real case scenario, maybe there's a, a Maybe there's a uh, inventory records that need to update for the seal stock for each of the outlet. Probably they use a CSV all the time. So uh, they can, when the end of the day, they can drop the file and then it can trigger the uh, automation here, right? So without needing to go into the application, uh, all, all the branches just uh, can just drop the file and then you uh, update the record in the data warehouse, right? So this is one of the sample use case. So the last one will be is optional. Uh, let's go back to the uh, lab. That so if you wish to clean up the resource, then you can proceed with this lab. It basically, is all the uh, command for you to uh, to destroy all all the uh, application that for this lab, so that uh, maybe you want to. Uh, uh, clean up and then uh, try try it again. Then you can do so. All right. Yep. So you this is optional. If you want to continue, you can leave it until you think that you don't require. Then you can proceed to continue with this step. Right. So okay. So that's all for today. And I think um, do we have any question in the chat room? Uh, so far so good. Uh, Jimmy. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think that's all for today. If you have any question, you can always uh, send us the email and or uh, yeah, so that's it. So uh, Jane, over to you. Thanks guys. Thank you for the lab today. I hope everybody enjoyed it and we covered all of your questions. It has been recorded and will be sent out to you uh, following the event and we look forward to seeing you at our next dev lab. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.